Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shoma, and I have another rant for you right now. And I'm in a mood. I'm in one of those moods where I just looked at some comments today that just irritate me. You know, I, I, I know that I am I am critical. I've admitted it. I'm hypercritical at times. But there's ways to have a debate with people, and there's ways to not have a debate with people. There's the things that you say. I I am not, I don't make personal attacks. I don't have the energy for personal attacks. I don't think I've ever personally attacked Cheryl Swoops. I don't know who she is. I've never personally attacked Angel Reese. I don't know who she is. I've attacked or critiqued their opinions or their comments or their play. But on a personal level, I couldn't care less about either of those ladies. But I have come to the acceptance and the reality and the understanding that there's a group of people that no matter what happens, they will never be honest with themselves. And Angel Reese's fans are notoriously dishonest with themselves. The commentary of she's the best rookie or she is amazing or all these double doubles or she is X, Y, Z or the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Now, I have a graphic that was put up by DraftKings. Now, I don't know what Angel Reese did to piss off DraftKings, but I've now seen a couple of graphics from DraftKings that have not exactly painted her in the greatest of pictures or portrayed her in the greatest light. We all know because it's hit us in the face a million times. We all know that she gets a lot of rebounds off of her own misses. We all know she gets a lot of rebounds off of the shots that get blocked. I saw someone post up that on Facebook that she has had 53 of her rebounds on 53 re- re- offensive rebounds on shots that she's missed. I think the number is higher. I believe it's higher. They've played almost 30 games. They played, what, 29 games? And in those 29 games, the last eight, she has 18 offensive rebounds off of her own misses. So I'd venture to guess that the number is more than 53. And at some point this year, I will probably do a deeper dive into it and go through every single box score and play-by-play chart to see for sure what the actual number is. But we know the number is high. She averages 5.1 offensive rebounds per game, which is two more than second, which is Aaliyah Boston at 3.1, and then Camila Cardoso is at 3.0. Yet this post says that if you take away her 53 offensive rebounds, she'd still lead the league in rebounds. That is factually incorrect. Clearly. Whoever posted this didn't go to math class in school or was sick the day they taught math in school for 12 years, plus college if they went to college. Because if you take away 53 rebounds from 29 games, what do you have? You have about a 1.8 or something like that. It's about 1.8, I believe, is the number. I'm not going to – don't quote me. I'll do a quick division of it. 29 divided by 53. That is just the wrong way. I did it backwards. 53 divided by 29. That is 1.827. So 1.83 rebounds per game from those misses. <clears throat> now, based on that, She wouldn't have 22 double-doubles. Based on that, she would not be averaging what she's averaging right now in rebounds, which is 
what is it, the exact number as I want to provide the exact number as usual. Her exact number for rebounds is 12.9. Second is Asia Wilson, 11.9. So if I remove 1.8, that brings her down to 11.1. Math works, folks, except when it comes to people who detest Caitlin Clark and for some odd reason love Angel Reese for the sole purpose that she's not white, bluntly, because I don't know a person. I she's not white. That's really what it comes down to. Because Angel Reese isn't isn't as far as I know. She likes guys, but she's not white. So since she's not white, people who don't like white folks will cheer for her, just because they won't cheer for Asia Wilson. Oh yeah, she's only been in the league for like seven years. They don't even know who the fuck she is. They won't cheer for Kyle Copper. They have no idea who she is. They won't cheer for Kennedy Carter, if not for the fact that she fouled the shit out of Caitlin Clark earlier this year and wasn't a teammate of Angel Reese. They'd have no fucking idea who she is. But instead, they have jumped on the Angel Reese train. And that's cool. If you like her, cool. But the lying about her is the what drives people crazy. Caitlin Clark played an uneven game the last two games, and she finished with 23 points, eight assists, and five rebounds. They lost by 10. She shot eight of 18, which is 40, about 45, four and a half, 45%. Tonight, she goes for 19, seven and seven. In both games, she had players on her team black, just horrendously miss wide open fucking layups, which has now cost her back to back double doubles. Which is why, of course, we say that the rebounding and assist rebounds and points are a lot easier than assists and points for double doubles because I rely on you to make a layup, and that is a challenge for many WNBA players. Tonight, she shot 42.8% from the field. She missed a couple layups herself that she would usually otherwise make. Everyone is, has a possibility of missing layups in the WNBA. It's like the thing that players do. But there are players that do it once in a while, and there are players that do it a lot. If you want to say Angel Reese works hard, I've always stood by that. She works real fucking hard. Rebounding. She put. She made a tweet. If it was that easy, everyone would do it. That was in response to people commenting about her inability to finish around the rim. After she went four for 16 from the field. Clearly, she is hearing the response. Clearly, she's reading the tweets, seeing the Instagram posts. Watching the videos on YouTube, maybe not ours, but she's what she's it's getting back to her one way or the other, and she's getting fed up with it. She doesn't like it. Well, guess what, Angel? We don't like watching bricks. Guess what, Angel? We don't like watching you miss layups and then get credited with rebounds for missing a layup right back to yourself. We like the integrity of the game to be you know held up here not put on the ground where you pad a stat in a game that you're down 14 or up seven with less than 10 seconds to go. That's what we like. So I acknowledge that rebounding is not an easy job. It's a dirty work job. It's a hard job. It requires hustle. It requires playing angles. It also requires people missing a fuckload of shots. You don't grab 22 rebounds in the game and people didn't miss a lot of shots. And that's what happened in that game against the Las Vegas Aces as neither team shot over 38% in that game, which is why Asia Wilson also had 18 rebounds. She missed 20 shots by her goddamn self. This is the stat that just popped. Oh, and then there was Kennedy Carter's comment. Kennedy Carter's comment was classic, man. Kennedy Carter, 
She says this shit. And I, I, I don't even know if she re- I think she has to know. And it's how you view it. Sports Illustrated says that she stood up for Angel Reese with powerful quote. Ah, this isn't a stand-up job, bro. This is a, you keep fucking missing layups quote. But I'm going to say it nice, in a nice way. She's doing the things. Angel's down there battling. She's trying to get some foul calls, playing strong, playing hard. Those are the things you need. She had an incredible game, no matter if she finished at the rim. She's doing the things that we need her to do in order for us to be successful, regardless of the outcome. We are a team. We're young. We're growing. And these are situations that we can learn from. Get the fuck out of here. When you say she had an incredible game, no matter if she finished at the rim, that is not an incredible game. She had a lot of rebounds. Having an incredible game is all around. It's not just grabbing some rebounds. It's not having your own ball come back. She had a possession where she grabbed four offensive rebounds in a row that she shot. And she had wide open shooters standing in the quarter unguarded. And instead of kicking it out, she keeps shooting. She keeps shooting. She thinks she's the scorer. So you have her comment coupled with Kennedy Carter's comment. And this is the number that here you need to see. According to DraftKings, Angel Reese is first. And I don't know what date this was. This is in the past couple days. Angel Reese is first in attempts, 274, but last in field goal percentage, 43.8% on shots within five feet in the WNBA this year. Take a look at this graphic. That is Brittany Griner up there. Over 75%. She's taking just over 100 shots from within five feet. I don't know who these other dots are. Here's Asia Wilson. She's taking over 180 shots. And she's over 65% on shots within five feet. There's De'Arica Hamby, who's taking close to 250 shots. And she's just under 65% at about 64%. Aaliyah Boston is taking about 205 to 210 shots from inside five feet. She's at about 62 and a 63%. There's Caitlin Clark, who's taking just over 100 shots inside of five feet, and she is in that 62 to 63% range. Caitlin Clark is a guard. I'm going to guess that in here somewhere is Kennedy Carter. She's probably somewhere in this little group right here. But look right down here. Look right down there. Angel Reese, bottom right corner, 274 shots, and she is – Sitting here shooting 43.8%. Let's do basic math. Basic math. 274 times 0.438. She has missed 154 shots inside of five and this is the person you want to proclaim as your rookie of the year. This is <clears throat> this is the person you want to stand on a podium with and stand on that wall with and tell me how amazing she is. That's the player that you want to stand on the wall with? Are you fucking kidding me? You want to stand on the wall with that player? Is that for real? You can't pop. When did people become stupid? When did people ignore facts? When did this happen? When did this start happening in bas- in sports? I know this happens in all other areas of life, but in sports where it is a numbers game, How many home runs you hit in baseball, RBIs, hits, runs, batting average, slugging, on-base percentage, OPS. These are all stats in baseball. If you hit a lot of homers, have a lot of RBI, hit at a high batting average, have a high slugging, on-base, OPS, you're a fucking good player. No one can argue it. It doesn't matter what team you play on. 
It does not matter. If these numbers right now that Caitlin, that Angel Reese is sitting at with, with 154 missed layups, whenever this was done, it was, I saw this two days ago. 154 missed layup attempts. If you chop that number and turn it into, I'll give you a, I'll give you a real number. 274. Angel Wilson is over 65%, right? If Angel Reese is 180 divided by 274, that's 65.6%. You are talking about another 120 points. 60 layups. Angel Reese has another 120 points right now. If she has 120 more points right now, let's see where she would go from. She would go from averaging 13.5 points per game, which is 27th in the league. To That would jump her from 392 points. Plus 120, that would put her at 512 points in 29 games. Divided by 29, she'd be averaging 17.7 points per game. She would be among the top 12 in the league in scoring. 17.5, that's 13. She'd be tied with, tied or right behind Neka Ogumake, right behind Kelsey Mitchell, Dierica Hamby, and Caitlin Clark. If Angel Reese was averaging 17.7 points a game right now, see how I, I how I keep it real? Because I, I know no other way to keep it. If she were averaging 17.7 points a game, first off, her rebound numbers would be down. That's the first thing. Understand that. Rebounding is, the rebounding numbers are down. She's not averaging 12.9 boards. She's averaging 11, 10.5. Ten and a half boards, maybe eleven. Because we're not just talking about rebounding your own missed shots, right? Because she misses a lot of re shots on rebounds that she gets from other players' missed shots. So we're not talking about just your own missed shots. That's 50, according to that one post I saw with fifty-three. We're talking about a hundred sixty more layups, sixty more shots. Her rebound numbers are down. It's not 12 9. It might be, it's like maybe 10.5, 11. She'd still be way up there. If that were the case, that would also increase her shooting percentage exponentially. Understand, exponentially would increase her shooting percentage. I'm going to go check and see how much that would be right now. Let's see what that would be. That would be, I'm going to get, I'm going to venture to guess. That her shooting percentage would probably jump to about between 45 and 50 percent from the field. Let's take a look. I like doing math for y'all. So bear with me. She's taking 357 field goal attempts. So for 357 minus 274, that's 83 that are outside of five feet. And outside of five feet might be six feet, eight feet. She's only taken 11 threes all year, so, so so 72 more shots that were out inside of three, but outside of five feet. So let's think about that for a second. Let's let's do the mathematics here once again. 138 plus 60. Got to give her 198 made bats field goals divided by 357. She'd be shooting 55.5% from the field. I will tell you flat out. If Angel Reese were averaging 17, 7, 11, and shooting 55.5% from the field, she's the rookie of the year. 
I'm not even arguing it. I'm not debating that. If she were shooting 55.5% from the field and averaging 17, 7, 11, she's rookie of the year. But she's not. But she's not. You see how I can adjust my opinion based on statistics and data and facts? I'm not worried about her team's record. I don't care what her team's record is. What bothers me about her team's record is they sacrifice wins to pad. They sacrifice wins to get her numbers. They sit Camilla Cardoso for lengthy periods of time so that Angel Reese has no one challenging her on her own team for rebounds. They sacrifice open looks so she can keep on jacking the ball back to the rim. These are the things that they sacrifice. And in fact, I think at this point, Teresa, Teresa Witherspoon is flat out tanking the fucking season. They've lost the last two games by two points. I think she's flat tanking the season. Flat out. How is Camilla Cardoso not playing 30 minutes a game? <laughs> what was that play they ran at the end of the game against uh, Connecticut? What was that play they ran? They inbound the ball to Reese. It's like she was doing a handoff, turns the ball over, they lose the game. But what was the play? I'm actually surprised that Reese didn't turn around, take two dribbles up, and try to shoot the ball from 30 feet. I wouldn't have been really upset about seeing that because I think that was probably the best option they had because they ran the ball. They, they, she, the ball was inbounded to her 40, 35 feet from the rim. Teammate running around her to pick, pick up the ball. Like, what was she going to do? They can't shoot. But if Angel Reese were shooting 55.5% from the field and making 65% of her lips, just like fucking Asia Wilson does, she's the rookie of the year. But the reality is she's not doing that. She's not remotely close to that. Her numbers are inflated rebounding-wise, even points-wise. They're inflated. Who the hell sends a 70-fucking-5% free-throw shooter to the line for technical foul I'm sorry, 74% for technical foul shots. When, when she's the fifth or sixth best free throw shooter on the team, and there are guards that shoot at a higher percentage than she does, and they're not the ones shooting them. Why does that happen? Because they goddamn well know that she struggles to put the ball in the hoop. It is not a secret. She struggles to put the ball in the hoop, and they will do whatever they can to get her fluffy-ass fucking points through technical free throws, technical foul free throw shots that she didn't earn that are being handed to her. And you know what? The best free throw shooters get them all the time. She's not one of the best free throw shooters. Why is she taking those shots? She better make every single one of them, but she shouldn't even be taking them. And that's where the issue lies. So, yes, the little thing that I have on the bottom, her stats are alarming. Because they tell the story of two separate possibilities. One is the reality, and one is what could be if she could clean this up. Here's the problem. I don't think she's ever going to clear this up. I don't think she's ever going to become a skilled offensive player. She will be the player she is now for the rest of her career. People thought Ben Simmons would get a jump shot. What the hell's happened to Ben Simmons? He couldn't shoot at LSU. Oh shit, he went to LSU also. God. They don't teach jump shooting at LSU except since back in when when Chris Jackson was there, Mabdu, uh, Mahmoud Abdul Rauf. They don't couldn't shoot there, couldn't shoot in the NBA, afraid to take a jump shot. I give her credit. She's not afraid to shoot it. She doesn't care. She'll shoot the ball off the backboard and not give a shit. She'll have a freaking player from another team back up eight feet off of her ass and dare her to shoot and say, go ahead, shoot it. We dare you. And if you make it, we'll clap it up for you and move on. But I'm gonna, you're going to shoot that ball every time. And they bait her into shooting it, and she's going to shoot it because she's embarrassed to not shoot it. Back in the day when the big had the ball at the three-point line, no one fucking, no one expected him to shoot. Nobody. But there was Alonzo Mourning, Patrick Ewing. It didn't matter. Brad Doherty, they had 17-foot range. 
They weren't shooting 24 footers. That's what they had 17, 18 feet max. If they shot a three, it'd be once in a blue moon. But I can adjust my thinking based on success. I still think Caitlin Clark is the most skilled player in the WNBA. And she's going to win the rookie of the year in a landslide. But if that number on that screen with 43.8% was 65.5% the way it is for Asia Wilson or De'Erica Hamby, who's at just under 64%, 65%, or even Aaliyah Boston or Caitlin Clark, who's in the 62 to 63% range. It was in that range. She's averaging 17 plus with 11 rebounds and 55, 52 to 55% shooting. She's the rookie of the year, and I'm not even arguing or debating it. I'm not. And I'm not going to go Monica McNutt on you and say, oh, it's whoever has the better record at the end of the year. No, I'm not going to do that. But that's not the case here. And I know I'm dragging this shit the hell on, but it is so – to look at a stat like this, I don't know what Angel Reese's camp did to DraftKings people to piss them off to create this graphic, which is literally freaking embarrassing. And just shows you just like there's nobody close on that list. There's someone who's taken somewhere in the range of 170 shots from inside five feet, and they're shooting under 50%. Look like they're on the 48% range. She's under 44%. And she's taking a hundred more layup attempts. <laughs> you can't make this up. This is data. But let the Angel Reese fans tell you something different. They'll say, oh, Caitlin Clark turns the ball over. Hoo, 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 hoo. She can't dribble the ball. Hoo, 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 hoo. Motherfucker, she's four, her team right now is 14 and 16. They were one and eight. They are 13 and eight. 13 and eight since they started off one and eight. You believe what you like. But data tells you the whole story. And unfortunately for all the Angel Reese fans, they don't like the story. They don't like the data. Whatever. I don't give a fuck. This is what it is. This is the more mundane version of Rudy's rant. But I think you get my drift. And this is exactly why Caitlin Clark is the rookie of the year. And it's not fucking close. That's all. Like, comment, subscribe. Ring that bell. Come on now, motherfuckers.